Our city is growing indeed. Welcome back to Murado, where S'mores and I are going to do a couple big things. We're going to increase the population and we're going to build our first large tourism area, including a harbor. Let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do before we get started is fix this fire safety issue because the last thing I need to do is burn the city down to the ground. So we're going to go around and we're going to place both fire stations and fire watch towers in some very key locations across the map. Hopefully bringing the hazard level down to a normal zone while allowing fire response helicopters to get to the fires in a timely manner. Next, I'm going to increase capacity of our education around the map. This is not going to come back to bite us in the butt at all, and we're going to have tons of jobs available. No problems. We're also going to begin a new area over near the farmlands where we're going to begin our population growth. Part of the reason I'm spending so much time this episode increasing our population is because we like to put unique buildings in and transit in and factories in, but unfortunately we don't have the people or the workers to sustain this cost. So we are unfortunately bleeding money, which means we have to turn off essential services and buildings to our Sims in order to keep the money flowing. So by increasing the population and building new areas without spending money on unique buildings and high-end services means that I can bring in more taxable citizens and continue to increase our budget. Continuing to build out this area, I'm going to place some high-density buildings with the high-rise ban on. I wanna make sure that there is lots of things to do, including parks, schools, places to work, etc. So I'm gonna spend some time detailing this up, making sure everything grows in, and hoping reach that next milestone, which would be amazing. Let's move on to the next area over by the college, over by Valley's uh, Cardiff build. And I wanna make a heavily high density area with a tram line that runs around the outside with some primary connections in the middle. I also along the edge here want to build a civic center around the disaster response unit. And I can't wait to put more buildings in there and spend more of the money I'm trying to make by putting in unique buildings. And while we were setting up the road network, our little area that we just built earned us the title of capital city, unlocking the harbor for us. In the middle here, I'm gonna create a semi-gridded layout with some little interesting nooks and crannies within this neighborhood. I'm also thinking that down the center, I want to run a pedestrian promenade but without the actual um, zone because I'm not quite comfortable using it and I plan on using it in the tourism area anyway. Now 
Now we're going to begin the Civic Center next to the Disaster Relief Building. We're going to place a courthouse and other official looking buildings, including a post office. Look at it. I love the corner building of this post office. Always has to be placed on a corner. Love it. I'm also going to go ahead and place a high capacity police headquarters as well as a firehouse. I was going to place the high capacity firehouse, but it is so much bigger than the high capacity police station. So instead, I'm just going to place the regular firehouse. Next, I'm going to place this new underground metro station, which I haven't seen yet, and I'm really digging it, and I think it matches great. And now I'm going to put everything in a district labeled Civic Center, get the metro hooked up, and continue on our way. Finally, to round off this entire new area, I'm going to create two districts. I'm going to put mostly high density residential and we're going to detail it. Look at it. It's really coming together. It is going to add so much population. After all of that work, we've reached Colossal City. So I think that we have earned the ability to build our harbor and bring in some tourists. Unfortunately, this pre-made area is having some issues connecting to the exterior harbor line. So I'm going to need to do some deconstructing and reconstructing of this area to hopefully make it fit better. Unfortunately, it's not going to be exactly where I want it, but I think having it over along this right side of the harbor, I can make it work. Now let's go ahead and connect the harbor up to our main road network through this roundabout, and I'm gonna add a crosswalk and some pedestrian pathways down onto the pedestrian key wall, hopefully inviting tourists to walk from the harbor over to where our tourism zone is gonna be. Enter the tourists. Now opposite of the harbor, I'm going to create our first tourism area and name it the S'mores Entertainment District. This is going to be a huge place of lots of leisure goods, lots of unique buildings, and lots of fun. You'll notice as I'm building, there are some spaces here between the grid. So we're actually going to rebuild out this area one rectangle at a time, making sure that we can take advantage of all sections of this grid. So all of the buildings meet where we want them, all of the paths go where we want them, all the roads go where we want them, etc. So you'll notice when we're done that the grids completely match and everything is great. I make the mistake of making this a tourism specialization, but I will fix it and make it leisure later. And before Shukaboa left, I was talking to him about attempting to create a beach. And you can see here, I'm flattening it out, trying to make the grade something more uh, walkable. I succeeded a little bit and I spent a lot of time really grading it down gradually. Unfortunately, due to the theme that we're using, we're not actually going to get white sand here, but uh, green-ish grass will have to do. I 
I think this is about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. I could see people having some issues. It is, uh, well, a significant amount of feet, but it is sloped well. Now, what is a tourism area without places for people to stay? So I'm gonna use some of these new ploppable hotel assets, which are unique buildings, and we're really gonna make it feel uh, inviting and uh, beachy by replacing the trees along these roads with the new palm trees. And then I'm going to actually back up these hotels off the road, creating a sort of one-way circle where people could come up and do valet or drop people off. And I think it's gonna be great. These hotels are looking great. We have places to stay and now it's time to add places to party. I'm gonna be putting the pedestrian pathways down the center of the roads and I'm gonna be adding places to shop and places to eat along the roads, not the pedestrian pathways. I'm also thinking about creating a nice big walkable area, which I'm going to fill in with the pedestrian promenade called the entertainment promenade, where I'm going to place a nice big fountain in the middle as a huge centerpiece. I want a nice big entrance as entertainment promenade. So on the side facing the harbor, I'm gonna place a glass structure. And on the other side, I'm going to place the large food truck plaza around both sides so people have a place to gather and to eat. Let's expand our pedestrian area with a little bit different of pathways leading off the fountain. Here is where I'm gonna place some two by two buildings for pedestrians to be able to access within the pedestrian road zone. I'm also going to delete some of this commercial zoning. I'm afraid too much commercial zoning is going to result in some issues with goods as well as some issues with not enough workers. Plus, I have a different idea for that area. But first, Let's turn up the music, detail, and make this house feel like a home. We've created all this time decorating an adult-centric entertainment zone. What about for the families? So right in front of the beachfront hotels, I'm gonna create what would kind of be boardwalky, but it is a park life area with plazas and promenades built in. I think it's gonna be a great place for family fun or for people who aren't necessarily interested in nightlife and just want a day out with lots of fun.
I have a tendency to want to make sure that every nook and cranny is filled with detail and fun and interest. And so you're really getting a taste of that here where literally basically every blank space I am filling with some type of building, some type of decoration, some type of tree. And as I was decorating, I realized I must be doing something right because I had 10 cruise ships show up and I checked it every single one of them was full to the brim with 100 passengers, which means I was having a thousand tourists show up. And while this may not be the most realistic way of parking a boat, I am happy that I am attracting tourists to our wonderful Murado. And the final thing that I really want to do in this area is decorate up these hotels and again, just make them feel like an actual place. So we're going to turn up the music, we're going to detail, and then I'm going to show you probably what is the craziest project I've ever done and I saved it just for Murado. So hang on. All right, A, I'm exhausted from all that detailing, but B, I'm so excited because this is going to be insane. I am going to create an abandoned waterfront, which means all of the buildings we're gonna put down need to be abandoned, they need to be in ruin, everything needs to be disgusting, because I think to go along with this really awesome abandoned railroad here, there needs to be something unique, and there needs to be a story, and there needs to be history, and so this kind of just came to me, and I really got excited and I feel bad because I totally scared everyone else in the Skyline 6 and received lots of messages but I think it's gonna be great so going back to my first episode where I created a natural disaster on accident I'm gonna create some on purpose so using the natural disasters tools I'm actually going to collapse some of these buildings and leave them in ruin and it turned out really cool because they're rubble piles so I decided to make them look overgrown by using the shrubbery and the rubble piles and some rocks to create a unique look let me know what you guys think I'm also going to enact one specific policy in this area, which is the no rebuilding because these are not historical buildings, so I don't want them to be rebuilt. But guys, this is the end of my episode. I think this is a really cool final hidden area and 
we're going to end it with some cinematics. If you guys liked this episode, let me know. If you are not subscribed, subscribed. Check out the rest of the Skyline 6 and be here next Sunday at 1230 Eastern where Grattles kicks off her third round in Murado. Bye, everyone. I know man passing by Life is good, best I've ever felt Get me up, so in it Somewhere I can find myself Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel I feel so alive As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky I found my way, I found my way I was in the dark against it all, but made it through the day Cause I found my way, I found my way In bad times, I know I'll be okay Cause I found my way I know I'll be okay Cause I find my way